The Canon Canonic range is an extremely popular range of viewfinder and rangefinder cameras. It was first produced in 1961, and by 1964, these Canonets have already sold more than 1 million copies. And according to Canon, a week's worth of Canonet cameras uh, sold in the first two hours after it was released. Now, today we deal with you know, pre-orders and months of waiting time, so it's nothing new to us. The camera that I have right here that we will be discussing today is the Canon Canonet 28 or the new Canonet 28, uh, the second iteration of the Canonet 28. The Canon Canonet 28, uh, in this case, like I said, the new Canonet is an improvement on what was considered a pretty low quality camera, the Canonet 28, produced from 1968 to 1970. Uh, the new one, I'm saying new Canonet a lot, but the new Canonet 28 was consequently produced from 1971 to 1976. It was first listed for the princely sum of 18,300 yen, and for an extra 1,500 yen, you could get a case as well. Now, this translates to $59 for the camera and $5 for the case. And even in 1971, that was towards the lower end of the camera cost scale. This Canonet was uh, in turn considered the, the 28, new 28, was considered a cheap alternative to the much sought after Canonet QL17, a hugely popular range finder even today and can cost you upwards of three, four hundred dollars. Mine was made in Taiwan and that should be an indicator that it was aimed at cost cutting. Now the camera is for all intents and purposes, just a point and shoot with the only difference being that it is not autofocus. Uh, it is a rangefinder camera. Uh, now in the viewfinder, you have 0.6 magnification and it has that superimposed rangefinder view uh, with parallax marks and the shutter speed indicator, uh, that strip with a needle appears on the right hand side of the viewfinder if you look through the camera. The camera has programmed auto exposures that ranges from a 30th of a second uh, at f2.8 all the way to 600th of a second at 14.5. Now the needle in the viewfinder that I spoke about will indicate at what shutter speed you are actually shooting. An interesting feature is that if the image is underexposed or overexposed, the shutter will simply not fire, it will lock. Uh, speaking of which, the shutter is a copal leaf shutter. As mentioned, the max aperture is f2.8, going all the way to f16. And the only time you have control over the aperture is when you use the Canolight D flash that fits into the camera hot shoe. Now when using the flash, you set your aperture and the shutter sync speed is automatically set to a 30th of a second. The film speeds available are 20 or the settings at least, those ISO 25 to 400, meaning the light meter only makes provision for film speeds up to 400, but you can put in here anything that you like, it just won't give you the right exposure reading. Uh, the light metering happens through that little CDS photosol that sits right there. It's a selenium one, which means it's a bit red, red sensitive. Remember that. A 40 millimeter lens that you find on here is spectral coated. It has a minimum focusing distance of about 0.8 meters, uh, which is not bad considering this will be mainly used for candid or street photography or you know just around the house pictures. The light meter requires a PX625 battery, uh, a mercury silver one uh, to operate. The camera weighs only 550 grams, has a dimension of 125 millimeters by 75 by 61 millimeters. It's small, it's a metal body, uh, but even so, uh, it's a proper pocket camera. I mean, I love carrying it with me as it is. Um, it's no fuss, it fits into a satchel, a bag, or even in your pocket. It has a solid feel, um, and it's got that awesome, uh, you know, vintage aesthetic, and it's, it's kind of handsome. The only thing I think is a little, little bit flimsy is this little aperture ring that they've got here, which is like a gray plastic. I don't like that. I ran two rolls of film through the camera for this test and it is an absolute blast to shoot. Now, as a pro photographer myself, aim and shoot is not really a luxury that I really have. With this little number and you're not just shooting for myself, you frame, you focus and you shoot. Considerations for aperture and, and those type of things I left to the camera and as such you approach picture taking rather differently. 
I found myself really looking more at just composition and also as a, re a result of a fixed 40 uh, millimeter focal length uh, all your shots are wider than you know is the normal uh, I love this camera for portraits uh, anything candid street uh, and a little bit of uh, landscape if you like um, and, and what's nice about it because it's so small when you shoot people it's kind of unimposing to them as for the lens it's sharp uh, but that depends on your focus it needs to be it needs to be sharp um, I haven't pixel peep, but I, I can't really say that on the scans I see any sort of serious aberrations. Um, but in a medium resolution, I don't see anything. I don't notice vignetting. I've seen people mention it. I don't really have, I haven't seen it. I haven't found it yet, really, on what I've, on the pictures that I've done. Uh, I don't speculate on this about color casks and color rendition because I find it useless because it's it's the film, the the subject matter, the lighting conditions, you know, it's not a lab, you know, so trying to determine if there's a color cast in this camera is a little bit stupid. Um, it does have light leaks. Um, that's the only gripe I have with it. There's a serious amount of light leaks on this camera. Uh, it might have to do with the age, but it seems to be a problem that um, people who have used the older ones have mentioned in forums and so forth. Um, uh, studying the picture shows me that there is definitely some leakage coming through the hinge here uh, and on the side where it closes the latch. Um, now you can work with that. Um, you can um, consider that as a, uh, a filter, you know, that is added and, tr and truth be told in some pictures the the flare actually, ugh, the light leaks actually does look cool. It does, it does work. It adds an aesthetic to, to the photos, but it's something that you cannot control. So it can spoil a picture that, you know, otherwise might have been better sans the leaks. So going forward, what I'll probably do is just, I'll just mask that off with black tape, just these edges. That should sort it out completely. In terms of flare, um, the flare that I've noticed is a soft gradient. Uh, I can't say it much for bokeh. But, um, I mean, I don't have control over the aperture, so if you're shooting outside, you're probably going to end up at somewhere between, like, if, you know, 8 at 125th, you know, so um, worrying too much about poker balls and all that sort of stuff, I find is also a little bit um, pointless, really, with this camera. Um, the, the beauty of this is the fact that it is a camera that you... You take out, you point, and I mean, this is, this is, I think, to me, really the, the reason I take it out is for the kind of the unexpected, not, not analyzing too much. And, and it definitely leans itself to, you know, that movement, the lamography movement. You know, it's definitely something that works perfectly for that. However, um, considered and beautiful portraits are definitely possible with this camera i mean i i i love it for portraits uh and then you know your normal street sort of candid stuff um if you're a serious range finder um, enthusiast uh then you know this might not be right at the quality level that you want i'd say maybe go for the qr17 uh, or one of those more expensive models but if you're looking for a candid, uh, fun, little lamography camera. I mean, I wouldn't look further than this. I love this thing. This is so much fun. If you watch the video all the way to the end, right to here, you are an absolute superstar. And thank you so much. Please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. Press that like button. And uh, there's some links down there to, you know, products, maybe a camera or two on, on Amazon. It's affiliate links. Uh, you know, you click, I get money. It's awesome. And uh, as I'm not a monetized channel, that all helps a huge amount. And um, yeah, I can't wait to see you in the next one.